It was a friendly. But at the game's 17th minute, suicide bombers blew the whistle on normality. They thought it was a fan's flair, played on, oblivious to what in hindsight was the opening salvo in what the French president would later call war. Minutes later, there was a second. By half time, President Hollande had been whisked away, and towards the end of the game, it started to dawn. People rushed onto the pitch, huddling together, waiting for information. Then, one of the defining moments of the last 24 hours. They marched out of the tunnels, singing the French national anthem. As they left, what was happening came into focus and panic. There was a lot of confusion inside the stadium. A very frightening crowd crush happened with people on the ground. So it's true there was an affecting atmosphere. Everybody started to panic. It all happened quickly. And now it's impossible to go back home. The trains are packed, there are people everywhere, and it's a big mess in Paris. There were at least three bombers. One, it's believed, had a ticket to the game, but was confronted by security during a search and detonated it outside. And though there are reports of members of the public being killed here, no official confirmation as of yet. This is the Parisian equivalent to Wembley Way and some small silver lining. If this bomb had gone off before the game started, these streets would have been thronged with 80,000 people on their way to the game. This cordoned off street where one of those suicide bombs went off. Police confirmed they'd recovered an Egyptian and a Syrian passport from the remains. The only clue now, a heavy police presence and there's blood on the walls. The real damage, of course, to families, to loved ones. The more existential assault to culture, to football, to things that bring people together.